Okay. I have a question, and because uh, uh, we we you are seeing uh, um, basically that if you have doubts, uh, you have to take you you should take biopsy, especially if you are not expert. But uh, you also said that there is an ex an exception, and is uh, the papilla. Uh, so not to take biopsy to the papilla, and I'm I'm I was wondering if there are other exceptions. I don't know, maybe. You see, uh, you are uh, you are watching in the fundus, and uh, you are wondering uh, if uh, uh, is uh, an hyperplastic folds uh, or uh, a fundus varices. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's, it's a very insightful question, as they often are from you. So one, um, yes, absolutely, there are other exceptions. They are varices. So the esophagus, a weird-looking vein in the esophagus, probably something not to biopsy. A big, yeah, swelling in the fundus, probably don't biopsy. Um, angiodysplastic things can bleed quite heavily if you biopsy them. Have you got any more, David, things that you should not biopsy? Anything that's pulsating. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's solid <laughs> advice. Uh, so that we can <clears throat> really nail, if we find something in the esophagus, the big uh, next 15 minutes, the big focus is if you find something in the esophagus, is it cancer? And when to worry that is cancer. And I'll show you loads of examples of things which you then should go to geeks.com. And there are hundreds of videos on there. If you search for lesion assessment and you focus it on the esophagus, then you can just go look at hundreds of examples. If you're interested in what this looks like, and I suggest we should all be probably interested. So I'm just going to, it's going to take me a little second to get the tech right, probably. Uh, and then you can see on this video what you think. Uh, this is so there's a little clue in the title but don't worry about that um maybe i shouldn't have told you that maybe you can't see the title anymore which is excellent so that image i showed you was a magnification of this zone let's just go through it so this is the from afar picture which we should always think about right when you find something think about it from afar so i know alex what you're seeing there when you look at that it's going through your head i think it's like there's some uh... It's phagitis, I think. Okay, so Alex has already said it looks like esophagitis. What else could it be? And also there is a tongue there of uh, columnar metaplasia. A tongue of columnar, you mean uh, this here, right? Up here, this. Yeah. yeah, okay, so Alex is saying a tongue of columnar metaplasia. As Tamaz, what are you seeing there? He's biased. He's such a such an honest man. Biased, I've seen the video before. Yolene, what are you seeing there? Are you remember? I think the, the Z line or the junction is, it's not regular, it's irregular. Yeah, it so it's kind of regular here, thing. right? This bit is regular, and then you have this zone where it's all just a bit not normal. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, Nika, anything else you're seeing here? Um, no. Okay. Inflammation, I would say. So, okay, so everyone, people are thinking this is inflammation, but how can we be sure? Like, how can we be sure this is not cancer? Alex, you're shaking your head. With this okay. image, I can't be sure. Okay, this is not so good. then what do you want to know? What what more information do you want? I would like more images. So more maybe images. Okay, Let's, uh, let me help you out with it. So let me just go maybe to here where we get a nice white light overview. Does this help you? Yeah, this helps more. Yeah, it's more clear the image now. Okay, more clear that it's cancer or more clear that it's inflammation? Uh, I think it's more clear that there might be something dusty there. Okay, that's a very important comment. So if we've gone from that's information to a bit not sure that maybe there's something going on there. Right, so then what do we need, uh, Micheli? What do you want to know to make your decision about exactly what that is? I want to get closer. The biopsy is not the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get closer to the lead. You want to get closer. You have a cap on already, so let's get a little bit closer, see what happens when we get closer. All right. So then we start on the edge. Okay. So that there is here. Okay. What you're seeing now. All right. So what do we think about that? I think that we just cap. Uh, uh, for everything else, uh, it's impossible to achieve uh, an image like that. So that without a cap, and this is underwater as well, you yeah. cannot achieve an image like that. This imaging platform is probably the best one on the market at the moment. I'm using it to illustrate the point, right? I'm not saying that everyone has this ability or this scope, but you still can see these images just in lower resolution and lower definition. The problem is, like, it's like saying, okay, 
Uh, I want to learn about something. Should I learn on terrible images or should we learn on the best images? And probably we should start by the best conditions for you to learn. And then, yeah, you go into the real world and like everything you get, you see, you know, you watch uh, TV and someone's driving a Ferrari and then you get in your car and it's a Volkswagen Golf and you think, well, that's life. <laughs> so I don't, here, what do you see, McKin? I see on the right, uh, small, uh, small and uh, puntiform uh, um capillary yes and uh, on the on the left uh, but let's ignore the left a minute on the right what you're seeing is normal, normal right? yeah okay. so then indeed you see a demarcation line right here yeah. clearly. and on the left you see something different so let's go a bit more close to the left so now you have a zoomed in view of this right so that line there is the one that you now will see on the image that line there is the one we just said was normal and this in the middle is something else right okay so here we go again that right so there you go now you know the context right so take me through this one then Michele what you see here I think that uh, here we can see a sort of transition between a smooth capillary and a very uh, disordered uh, capillary and uh, in the center of the image uh, it's very hard to recognize uh, uh, capillary and uh, I can see that maybe they are absent or uh, or uh, the structured uh, capillaries uh, in, in the center of the image. Well, on the left side, you clearly have what we were talking about before, glandular mucosa, right? Yeah. So Sophia was talking about squamous, but you see it on, both on one image. This is glandular mucosa, either of Barrett's or of the stomach, right? Yeah. Then when we look at this more, now do you see some capillaries here? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about these capillaries. These are. Uh, um, and you only have to use one of three words. Wider. Well, uh, one of two words, actually, but they modify the stent. So the words are regular and irregular, and you can modify them as you wish to describe this okay. zone. They are regularly irregular. Okay. Yeah, or regular, depending on what you say. But compared yeah. to the ones that we saw before, they are definitely a bit more irregular. Yeah. These ones here are pretty regular. And these ones here are a bit more irregular. So um, now, this is different. So this is the other end of the esophagus, if you like. This is the around the junction. These tend to happen. We already saw where they tend to happen in the two to four o'clock on our previous gastroscopy. This is the, the adenocarcinoma this is a part of the spectrum. And it has many different appearances. Um, if you look at the top, and I'll show you that case, because it's really a beautiful example. You have that um, beautiful Barrett's mucosa that we showed you before. And then it just looks like someone's, like, I don't know, hollowed out a part of it where the structure is lost. And this is cancer in Barrett's, right? So that's actually what you see if you put the virtual chromoendoscopy on when you're doing. I mean, here you see loss of acetyl whitening, right? Here you see that very clearly. And then you zoom in on that zone and you have uh, a punched out zone of, of um, abnormality. And it's the same here. Um, there's something going on here, and it's the same, and it's, there's something going on here. So this is to give you the impression of from the left to the right side, what it is like, first impression, and then when you zoom in to have a better look at it. And I'll go through a couple of those examples. Yeah, I mean, we're going to go through this later, I think, PTN, aren't we? So we can skip this part about examining. Um, Okay, and we talked about uh, the right treatment, but of course, uh, these are the criteria for cure if you're going to do endoscopic resection. So let me just have a look uh, at the image. So which case was it that we had here? This is a beautiful case, so I'm going to show you this, and then I'll show you a much more out, uh, crazy example in a minute. Can I ask a question, though? Please. When, when you've seen something that you're worried about that you think could be malignancy or high-grade dysplasia that may be endoscopically resectable, can you take too many biopsies that will make it harder than for someone to resect it? What, what should you do? It's a fantastic question. So, so the first question, the first answer is it's very different from the colon where you absolutely must take biopsies. I think that's that's very important. The number of biopsies is, um, is of course, going to, the more biopsies that you take is going to increase the difficulty of any potential resection. And then we'll show you now maybe the sort of places, maybe actually it's a really good point. Thanks, David. And then we use, uh, firstly, in not underwater. So this is a non-underwater image of um, this zone. And you can see that you have this beautiful glandular structure on the outside. And then you can just draw around it, right? I'm drawing around it right now with the mouse, an area of punched out 
abnormality where there is glandular structure. I mean, you can see it, right? But it is just much more crowded together. And it's exactly what you see on a microscope slide. When you look, um, you see that the glands are much more crowded together and they're much more vascular. And this is what you see here. Okay, and then you can get extremely good images if you combine the cap with uh, water immersion. And then you, you know, the sort of imaging that you can get on this platform is incredible. This you very commonly see. So people often mistake this for ulceration. This is not ulceration. Often in these situations, you get either food adherence or fibrin uh, ad adherence to the surface of these lesions. So a lot of people, they see, and I'll show you another example in a minute later in the course, they see that and then they think, that's cancer, but it's ulcerated. No, it's not. And, and this is completely endoscopically resectable. Anyway, so then you wash it off and you see that actually what you have there is an even worse loss of destruction than what you had at the bottom.